Normally I don't like to start a video by uh, creating an argument, but uh, you guys might be doing something wrong. Let's talk about it. Today, we're gonna be talking about Radeon Chill and how it's actually a feature that all of us should be using. You see, it's not uncommon when building a gaming PC to pretty much throw all of your budget into the PC itself. The first gaming PC I ever built could push excess of 100 frames per second, yet the monitor I had could not. <laughs> the monitor I had could run at 60, if that. To be completely honest, this is a habit that I personally am guilty of, of letting my GPU just run completely wild. And that is because, I mean, I love seeing, you know, 120, 160, 200 frames per second. It's a validation that I spent good money on this computer. But the problem is, that is wasteful. To be completely honest, Radeon Chill should be on especially if you have a monitor that cannot receive the number of frames that you're putting out. You see, monitors work in a very simple way. They have a refresh rate and it's measured in Hertz. And Hertz is roughly the same as frames per second when being translated. I say roughly because 60 Hertz is like 61 frames per second, but they're very, very close. And you can generally use them to gauge how many FPS you should actually be sending to the monitor. Things like FreeSync and G-Sync do limit how many frames can actually be sent to the monitor and it actually communicates back to your GPU and tells it not to send more than what the monitor can receive. This is actually how the sync part of the FreeSync and G-Sync work. They synchronize what the monitor can actually do to what the GPU can put out. Essentially, when these functions are working properly, the monitor will only ever receive the maximum number of frames that it could allow. That being said, that doesn't always work. In fact, some games are programmed to run in borderless window mode only, and unfortunately, G-Sync and FreeSync both do not work in this case. Today, we're gonna to be focusing mainly on AMD, so we'll be talking about FreeSync from this point out. Essentially, there are games that will not work with FreeSync, and this is where Radeon Chill comes in handy. You see, what Radeon Chill does is it allows you to set a targeted frame rate. It's essentially AMD's proprietary frame rate targeting algorithm. How it works is it essentially looks for a specific frame rate. And then after it hits it, it maintains whatever clock that is. This actually relieves a lot of load on your GPU. Say you got a 5700 XT. You run this thing 100% of the time and you're noticing that the temperatures are getting a bit high. You've tried undervolting to make sure that you're not just putting too much current through and you're not really getting satisfactory temperatures and results. But you've got a 70 Hertz monitor, which is actually what I got, a 1440p 70 Hertz monitor. And you notice that Radeon Chill allows you to set it to specifically 70 frames per second. You go ahead and set the range from 60 to 70 frames per second, and you notice that your GPU actually is only utilized around 60%. This drastically drops your temperatures and makes your game run a bit more stable, as the frame rates don't fluctuate as wildly. This is actually the main reason it's called Radeon Chill, as it allows your Radeon GPU to kind of just, you know, chill. That being said, there is a secondary use case that's actually really important. You see, AMD Relive doesn't work currently at all. In fact, it's a stuttering mess that it just, it used to work so much better. And why? Well, it's because of RDNA. RDNA changed the architecture considerably. And unlike GCN, there is actually more put into RDNA to make sure that it's a gaming GPU, less productivity and more gaming. This actually slightly backfired on the cards as they do put nearly 100% of their resources into producing frame rates for games. If you enable Radeon Chill and it's running at 60% and then you start using GPU encoding, you'll actually find that all of a sudden the things just smooth out. 
And that is because your GPU can now properly also process the information necessary for GPU encoding. And this is actually something that I stumbled onto. I was actually recording Elder Scrolls Online on the same computer that I'm playing it. And that is a bit of a process because the game is actually very CPU intensive, but not as GPU intensive. I did lower my resolution to 1080p because, well, that's what I'm going to upload it at. And I did have my frame rate set to 60 frames per second because, again, that's what I intend to upload at. But I was still having stuttering issues. I switched to the CPU encoding and I was still having issues. And on a 12 core, that seems a bit weird, doesn't it? Well, that's when I decided, why don't I just limit the frame rate to what I'm recording it at, which was 60 frames per second. And all of a sudden, the problems went away. All the stuttering and everything. And that is in part because my GPU could properly process and because my frame rate was divisible by 60, because 60 goes into itself one time. Awesome, right? So essentially, there are a lot of benefits to actually enabling Radeon Chill. And you don't even have to enable it globally. You can actually enable it on a game by game basis. So say you're playing a game like The Witcher and The Witcher is not a game that honestly plays very well above 60 frames per second. It's kind of slow paced. The game itself is very cinematic. I like it around the 70 Hertz range. So because of that, I would put a limiter on The Witcher to allow my GPU to have a little bit of extra headroom in case a griffin decides to attack and like blow up the entire area and make it entirely laggy. Or another example would be maybe I'm playing CSGO and I know I want every frame to count, but I know my monitor will cap out at a certain point. Let's assume that I'm playing this at a competitive 1080p, 240 hertz resolution. At that point, I would want to limit it to just 240 hertz, because if I go past that, I will be losing information. And if my GPU can easily handle that 240 hertz, no problem, but it kind of starts to have issues around 250 hertz, now I actually have headroom for when things go wrong. Essentially, it's a feature that should be used and has a lot of benefit, but nobody's talking about it because it doesn't make your numbers any higher. Essentially, you should really be doing it for a couple of reasons. One, you'll use less power. If you aren't able to drive it, this is easily one of those ways to make sure that your PC isn't using more than it needs. Two, it will allow you to control frame rates outside of FreeSync, and that is kind of a big deal. I have a game called Muse Dash on my PC that runs at like thousands of frames per second because it's just too easy to drive. At least when I'm hitting something, I will hit it at the correct refresh rate. But that being said, that game's got so much leeway, it's probably not that big of a deal. Digressing. <laughs> Essentially, you should be using this in order to pretty much add extra life to your GPU. And then the last reason is mainly temperatures, because if you are using this, assuming that your GPU isn't being utilized 100% of the time by 60 frames per second, this will allow your GPU to scale back ever so slightly. I'm under a liquid cooled system. I don't even worry about temperatures and I am going to be using this on a daily basis. Not only for recording, but also because now that I know what it does and how it works, I know I can essentially sit right in the sweet spot for my monitor. <laughs> Either way, it is a setting that I think all of you guys should at least spend a little bit of time looking at. Let me know in the comments section uh, what games you would run at which refresh rate. I'm actually kind of curious. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Wolfie, out.